And here we are, we've finally made it. We're at Rustaville, down at the British Motor Museum. You can see all the things behind me there. And look at this. Look behind me. Look at this. Let me turn the camera on and give you a look at this before we do anything else. Well, it's very definitely an Austin. Belongs to the British Motor Museum, as you can see up there. Maybe it looks as though it was maybe ex-military, possibly an ambulance. Really sorry, folks. I know very little about military stuff or ex-military stuff. But spotted in the background on the other side of there, look at this glorious second generation Mondeo. Absolutely gorgeous. Welsh shawl from Wales at one point by the looks of it. The Mondeo Z Tech. Absolutely gorgeous cars. Of course, today we'll come down to my Mondeo. A little bit more about that later on, maybe. This, you can't see much in there, unfortunately, for the reflection. But this is a gorgeous looking car. Now, hopefully, you can see behind me the sheer amount of cars here. Somewhere in the region of, I think there's over 600 cars, maybe closer to 800 cars. There's so many cars here today. So what I'm going to do is try and make my video stand out a little bit more and be a little bit different than everybody else's video or all the other creators here will be doing. I'm going to highlight some of the cars that I obviously have an interest in on my channel. So if there's any American cars here, I've already seen a couple. So we'll go over and see if we can get some information on those American cars. But there are so many cars here. If we have things that are uh, out of the ordinary and a bit unusual, we'll get some of those as well. But we'll definitely um, head off and see what else we can find here. Hopefully, we're going to catch up with some of the other creators that are here as well and uh, have a bit of a conversation with all the people that you love and watch on a regular basis on YouTube. Anyway, let's go and see what else we can find, see if we can find some American cars. So I've been wandering around, found a couple of young lads, and they're from up north where I am, and uh, what they do is they're going on a trek. Actually, they're doing a check on a trek. I'll give you a quick look at this. And the idea is for that, they're going to take this car and take it back to where it was originally born. And they're doing it, I think it was a, was it a 4,000 mile 4, journey? 4,000 mile round trip. So, 4,000 mile round trip. And uh, this gentleman here is... Hi, I'm Connor, and this is Dan. Yeah. And that's Dan. And these are the two lads that are going to do it. Do you want to tell us a bit more, uh, Dan, about, or Connor, about what you're doing? Yes, yeah, so we're going to start, Dan's going to start in Newcastle, pick me up in Coventry, and we're going to drive all the way down to Dubrovnik in nice. Croatia. Uh, through various places, the Nürburgring, the Stelvio Pass, yeah. um, Venice, Lake Garda, the Alps, all of that lot. Um, and then when we get to Dubrovnik, we're going to turn around and we're going to come back a different route. And as you say, take it back to the uh, factory it was built in uh, near Prague. Um, Fantastic. Because it's now a Skoda Museum. So Absolutely we're going to take the car home. And you're doing this in June, I think you said? Yeah, so we leave in June and we're doing it all for Alzheimer's Research UK. Yeah, so it's all going towards Alzheimer's Research, guys. Um, have you got anything, any online presence at the moment on social media? Yeah, so the main place to find us is uh, on Instagram, at Check on a Trek. And our Just Giving page is listed as the same, so you can find out more about what we're doing, find out how you can support, and it's uh, all on there. Absolutely fantastic. Thanks very much for that, Thank you Dan. so much. You're welcome. So there you go, guys. If you're interested in that and you want to support the two guys there with Check on a Trek, go on Instagram, search for Check on a Trek, and the Just Given page is also the same name as well. And then you can help donate and see if we can get this old Skoda favourite back to where it was born, to the Skoda Museum for Alzheimer's Research. Well, it has turned a little bit windy here. And it is cold. But it's, like, really cold. So heading back to the car for a couple of minutes. Let's have a, a bit of a breather. But that's just cars everywhere. Absolutely amazing. And the quality of cars and the standard of cars and the variation of cars. It's absolutely crazy. Have a look at some of these. And as I say, the quality of some of the cars, I mean, look at this Capri. What a thing. You know, I had one of those, exact same colour. If you watch any of the videos, you might have seen it on there after I smashed the front end up and ripped that wing open. And a gorgeous Fiesta next to that one as well. You know, I've got the Rovers. There's an Alfa Rover here. Absolutely amazing. Some of the cars that are here. Ah, oh, Jag. I found a Jag. What a beast of a car. It's absolutely amazing stuff here. Now, I did spot some American cars parked up over there. I think there's a, some American police cars, a taxi. Look at Mark 1 Cavalier. So many different designs and types of cars out here. Just come across a Chevy Caprice. 
isn't it? Gorgeous. Hang on, a bit overexposed on the light with the sun being in the background. But what an absolutely gorgeous thing this is. You've even got a cold warm water sticker. And the original one, I remember the AAA. And look at that dealership name on the back, the dealership badge. What an absolutely gorgeous thing this is, though. Come on, Peter Chevy Caprice. I do like that. I do like that a lot. And of course, another glorious one, the Rover P5B. Powered by the 3.5 litre V8. Originally a Buick motor. And Rover used it instead. Glorious cars these are. An absolute limo owned back in the day by people like doctors, bank managers, politicians. So many wonderful cars here today. Oh my god, look at this beauty. Ford Granada Estate. Now the question is, is it the 2.8 gear? Is it the Gear X? Oh it is. 2.8 Gear X. Original roof rack on there as well. The lower interior. It's even got the computer on the dashboard. I appreciate you can't see it through the camera because of the uh, reflection of the windows, but the computer is on the dashboard. Yeah, uh, it's been all changed. It has done the wet belt last year. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah. What an absolutely yeah. wonderful car that is. Condition it's in. It's absolutely fantastic. Monoblock wheels. Oh my God, that is such a delight. If I had the money and that was for sale, it would be coming home with me. Now, one of the best things about coming somewhere like this, coming to Russell, is you just never know what you're going to find. And I found something here that's absolutely adorable. Well, there's a pair of them, completely different, but they were probably both used at around about the same time back in the days when these were on the road. Take a look at these. We've got a proper yellow beach buggy here, complete with convertible roof. Now, well, obviously, back in the days when these were out and about, they normally came with no weather protection at all, no roof. A bit overexposed because of the way the camera is at the moment, but apart from the beach buggy parked next to that, this amazing Chevy Corvette, the Greenbrier edition as well. And of course, it's sitting on the best wheels in the world, the old both race slots. Amazing patina on this, absolutely fantastic. The window's open, so we'll get a quick look inside. The seats covering simplified dash. My God, and an owner's manual for it as well. This is such a thing. Absolutely gorgeous. If you're looking for a van, this is the van to have, especially if you know American stuff. Certainly don't see many Chevrolet Corvairs, especially the Greenbrier edition. What an absolute sweet thing that is. And then another one of my favourite cars, Hearth. Now, unfortunately, it's a Volvo. It's not a Cadillac. But it's still, look at the length of that. Just about fits in the screen there. Obviously, it comes complete with coffin. It may or may not be a real one. I do love a hearse, though. I'd love a proper hearse, like a real one. And as it says on the roof, that is true dedication. And then, a, and then a little bit further on from the hearse, I found some Ford Crown Victorias. I bet Matt's been around. I bet Matt's already got a uh, film of these. That's Palm Beach County Sheriff car. That nudge bar is amazing. I could do with that for one of mine. All the gubbins inside of it as well. Complete with cage in the back. Obviously, none of us have ever been in the back of a police car. That's just no. That's just, we wouldn't do that. There's no black and white. Two black and white. Oh, look. Somebody's had an accident. Never mind. And then the Crown Vic taxi. Now, I don't know whether the Crown Victoria is more known or more common as a police car or if it's more common as a taxi. Certainly if you're in places like New York back in the day when these were all used on the road, maybe the Crown Vic would be more common getting used as a taxi. And then uh, they became out of favour. All of a sudden they fell out of favour once the, uh, the issues with the, the V8s and the environmental concerns over in the USA took place. So 
they've all been sort of um, de-restricted and de-used now. And I think Cletus McFarland owns most of them. Any of them that aren't over here, probably at Cletus McFarland place, and uh, getting thoroughly enjoyed and thoroughly used and abused. And then, of course, when you're wandering around, there's always something that just happens to grab your eye. I mean, this is well used and well abused, but at the same time, absolutely fantastic. Some information there. So if you want to have a look, you can pause the video and have a read through that. But what an astounding thing it is. Reliant Super Robin. I think at one point that was a standard Reliant Robin. Absolutely wonderful. I bet that was just a barrel of fun on the road to play with. Obviously well looked after, professionally valid the way it should be. Do like that, what an amazing thing. And you most definitely don't see many of these. Now I was initially, when I was walking up this, I was initially thinking it was some kind of duck. And then I thought it might be something to do with uh, Alistair from Top Gear. But apparently, it's not. This is absolutely wonderful. Is this yours? No, you want to talk to the lady in the back. Ah, right, thank you. Hello. It's all right. I'll not be on camera. You don't want to be on camera. What is this? It's not a duck, is it? Definitely, absolutely nothing like a duck. Right, right. Nothing like a duck. Right, okay. It's not military, so to start with. Right. Basics, not military. Beyond that, the duck's about three times bigger than this. Yes. Four times bigger. Yeah. Massive. They're built on a lorry frame, I think. Right, okay, yeah. Because when I was when I was seeing it from afar, I was thinking, is it a duck? Is it something to do with Hammond, Hammond from Top Gear? Because he did something similar. But from a distance, and I was like, I don't know what it is. And I hate not knowing what something is. But it's only because there isn't another one unless you've seen this when you haven't seen one. Right. It's a homemade job. Ah, right. Well, that explains it's it. Only one, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're excused. Thank you very much. And do you, do you enjoy it? Do you use it a lot? Oh, yeah. It's a marvellous thing. Fantastic. Yeah, I love it. Everyone loves it. What's, it. what's its base model? This is, this is a tricky part. It's all. His own work. Right. But underneath, there's no chassis. Right, it's okay. It's a boat underneath. Right. With these bits, whatever you call them, axles, yeah. sort of fixed on somehow. Yeah, right. So it didn't start out life as a, a transit or anything? No, it started right. off as sheet of metal. Sheets of metal to start with, and all the other bits were scrap yard. Scrap yard. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant doing stuff like that. Yeah. It's the best way to do it. Well, yeah. He was going to make another one, but this was so good. He couldn't think what to do. So well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the trouble is, it's so long since he made this, he'll never do another one. Now. No, that's he it. Said, if I make another one, I shan't know which one to take. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, there is that. Well, it's yeah. True, isn't it? It is, it is, yes. Well, thank him very much for building it and for bringing it down. It's absolutely wonderful. It does. It does. You've tried it. Oh, hundreds of times. Oh, fantastic. Lakes and rivers and Norway, absolutely. Sweden. Absolutely brilliant. See, see. See, that's what I will Build it, enjoy it, have fun with it. No. Yes, I can. I can see. Yes, I. Peaceful rivers be a lot more comfortable. Choppy on some of the lakes when it's windy. Yes. Yeah. Not that this bothers. No. This is fine. It's, it's, it's just the passengers. Other people think it's fine. I mean, we're nearly there. Yeah. Right. That's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, as we're looking around for uh, other things of beauty, things to look at, I found this. Now, I'm thinking this could be Galaxy. It's the XL, so I'm definitely thinking that's a Ford Galaxy. That 392 barrel. What a lovely thing. Amazing how solid they are. We've got open windows, so we're going to look at this glorious interior. Look at the pattern. Pattern in that upholstery. Absolutely amazing. And what an amazing dashboard. 
That's absolutely fantastic. And obviously, it wouldn't be any kind of car show anywhere at all. That an American truck, specifically a Dodge Ram. Ram 1500. With the Hemi 5.7. Ever in the search of the uh, the quirky and the unusual? Now this is interesting. It's got a Skoda barge on it. So at some point it was a Skoda. It's quite short wheelbase, rear engine. Oh, here we go. It's a bug rat. Home in on that. You can pause the video if you want to read any of that. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? You just don't know what you're going to find near somewhere like this. We've also found a Lincoln Continental guy. There's so much American stuff here, today. Absolutely fantastic. This is a two door. Seem to be going a little bit of work at the moment. I would think it is anyway. Lovely thing, size of a land yacht. What a nice thing! So nice to see American cars kicking about. Of course, we're all here today, courtesy of uh, three YouTube creators, namely Hubnut and Miss Hubnut, Matt from Furious Driving, and Steph from iDriver Classic. And the beauty of coming somewhere like this, now they've announced this and they've created this as being an all-wheels welcome scenario. Let's make sure I'm not going to get run over there. Uh, they've created this as an all-wheels welcome, so it doesn't matter what the car is, what the vehicle is, if it's got wheels and it's powered by any form of engine or motor, it's allowed to be here. And you've just got no idea what you're going to find when you got here. Now, as yet, I haven't been in either of the two buildings belonging to the museum. I've just been running around outside. And I've, just as I've looked away there, I've just saw something else that caught me eye. So I'm going to turn around and we'll head that way. But uh, it's absolutely crazy the amount of stuff that's here and the cars that are here. If there's not something here, if you were coming down for the day, if this is on again next year, which hopefully it will be, if you can't find something here that tickles your fancy and uh, puts a smile on your face, you're sadly in the wrong place. Because if you can imagine any kind of vehicle, it's here today. Have a look at this. Full-size Plymouth Fury. No, it's not Christine. This is a couple of years later. This is a 1960 Plymouth Fury, not the 58. Two-tone with the cutouts on the wing work. Look at the fins at the back of it, though. Very reminiscent of uh, the 59 Cadillac, which by this date in 1960 had uh, started to have its fins reduced whether that was because of uh, overall design at the time or health and safety, but this one still comes with a fairly hefty pair of things on the back of it. What an absolutely fantastic thing. Now, you could argue the point that the 58 Fury was a little bit better, but that would only be maybe because you uh, you saw that on the movie Christine. But this 60 Fury, I mean, who wouldn't drive that? That's another one of those cars that give them a chance. That'll be going home with me today. And of course, it'd be really unfair if I didn't at least get some video footage of Miss Hubnut Shemi and Hubnut Betty, the 4 AU that he brought in all the way from Australia. There's that much here today. It's going to go for a bit of walk across the aisles, swapping from side to side. There's just literally no way unfortunately i'm going to be able to cover everything today which is why i've just been sort of picking out vehicles that i like although there's lots of nice stuff kicking about here there's a toyota sarah now i have fancied one of them a while back i was interested in one of those strange quirky little cars with the, the gullwing doors so i'm not too sure unfortunately and then there's this this is something that will be really interesting to drive around in. I've actually got no idea what it is. Oh, 
no idea what that is at all. It is absolutely marvellous though, and very strange and uh, that was the ordinary. Is there any indications anywhere of what it might be? Well, it has the steering wheel from a deal, but uh, if you're watching this, if this is yours, comment below, tell us what it is. If you know anything about it, comment below, tell us what it is. No idea what that is. I've been in there, yeah. But the pure selection of stuff that's here today, as I was saying before, there's, there's that much here. There, there has to be something here that brings memories back or puts a smile on your face. And there's one of the coolest cars ever. The Mark III Cortina JXL. Now, whether your dad or your granddad had one of these, whether you've currently got one, if you watched Life on Mars and you saw Gene Hunt flinging one around, absolutely marvellous. As you know, if you watched any more, if you've watched a few of my old videos, you know that uh, at some point last year I acquired a Mark III myself, which I'm hoping to get back on the road this year. And of course, this is the one known as the pre facelift model, so it's got the sloping dashboard. I don't know if you can make that out in there or not for the reflections, but this is the one with the sloping dashboard and the uh, the little pod with the four additional gauges down underneath the dash above the centre console. What a lovely car. What more would you want but a Mark III Cortina, especially a JXL pre-facelift? Of course, while we're looking at all these wonderful cars, picking out the odd one as we, uh, as we pass them. Daff there, labelled as a Volvo. The weather really has improved. It's a little bit windy, it's a little bit chilly, but it's uh, it's fairly warm in the sunlight. The NSU Prince. Now, I've never actually seen one of these in the steel, as it were, previously. Definitely an unusual car, rear engine. A lot smaller than I thought it would be. Very much smaller than I thought it would be. What a lovely, unusual thing, though. It's an NSU Prince 4L, apparently. Citroen BX there. There's a lot of cars with Mark III Cavalier there. Well, I appear to be instantly drawn towards this Dodge Ram truck. I know I keep seeing it, guys, but the sheer selection of cars that's here today. Console Capri parked up there. You don't see many of them. Now, will you look at these next few fine automobiles? It'll give me a chance to say, oh, by the way, you'll have to excuse camera girl's fingers here. They're just about to come into shot. She does keep sticking them where she shouldn't. Anyways, uh, where was I? Oh, yes, it'll give me a chance to say that this event was, although it was absolutely fantastic, it was massive. And inside both buildings that belong to the museum, the buildings themselves are huge and they're packed with cars and everything. Um, and there's just no way... I would be able to film the, uh, the entire event outdoors and the inside of both buildings and talk to people and enjoy the whole event myself as well in, in the one day that we were there, on the, the time space that we were there. So there will be a part two. Now, part two will be coming up very shortly um, in the next couple of days or so. So part two will be inside the British Women's Museum and inside the Jaguar Heritage Centre as well. I'd also like to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to Steph from iDriver Classic Matt from Furious Driving and Ian and Collie from Hubnut for putting the whole event on and obviously the rest of the team behind the scenes involved in creating and getting everything on the road so we could all come down and enjoy this massively popular event. So looking forward to it next year and hopefully next year I'll get to bring one of the bigger cars down, one of the American ones that I've got. And also not forgetting to mention how great it was to meet some of the creators from the channels that I'm subscribed to and I enjoy watching. Simone from Hooked on Classics, follow her for Pinky and Motorbike and uh, T 
TC at Cortina Estate. Pete and his bus for the fantastically stuff he does with buses and all the classic cars that he drives. Great to say hello to Alex from Alex's Assets as well. As well as finally meeting Matt from the Adventures of Stickman and getting introduced to Beards and Bangers. All absolutely brilliant people. Pleasure to meet everybody. And thank you to everybody uh, that took the Haynes manuals and the other manuals, the sort of manuals that I left in front of the Monday up to be taken away to save me some space at home and save us having to carry a load of weight on the way back home. Whoever you are, whoever you were, if you're watching this and you took a manual, thumbs up to you. Thank you very much for that. If you've enjoyed the video, caress the like button. And if you were there and I filmed one of your cars, comment below and let me know that your car is in it, whereabouts your car is. And if I've missed your cars or if I just seem to whiz past um, your car and you're watching it, I really am sorry, but there was just so much there. But uh, there was that many YouTube creators there that between us all, you'll probably get to see, if you watch all of our videos, you'll probably get to see everything that was there on the day and you'll not miss out on anything. So do make sure and look for all the other creators and all the other channels that are featuring videos from Rustaville and you'll be able to see everything that's on there. In the meantime though, thanks for, the, for watching this one. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.